Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Johanna Miller of the Vermont Hunter Resources Council, joined, joined today in our third climate dispatch of 2021 by my friends and colleagues, Lauren Hurl of Vermont Conservation Voters and Ben Edgerly Walsh of VPIRG. Um, and we are here today giving you an update this Friday afternoon. Um, while it's the third week of the legislative session and new leadership, new lawmakers, um, returning lawmakers are getting to work um, in this virtual reality. Um, this is also a really important week and a turning of the page for this nation in terms of inaugurating the Biden and Harris administration. What a day um, and what an opportunity that that is um, to return to centering science and facts and data and so many important decisions and conversations um, and centering equity and justice in the work we have ahead of us in the climate sphere and beyond. So I just have to say I'm feeling lighter after that inauguration and I think it's gonna have um, a lot of manifestations for our work here in the state of Vermont in terms of our ability to focus on um, climate and justice and so many important issues um, in a new way with a partner in the White House again. So um, I hope you all took the time to check out that inauguration and Amanda Gorman in particular. She was incredible. Um, but we continue to do our work here in the great state of Vermont, um, thinking of you all as we continue to do this work virtually and hoping that you and yours are safe and sane and that we're continuing to do our work in partnership with some of our coalition members like, like Ben and the VPER team um, to continue to focus on the need to, to act on climate transition to a clean, equitable energy economy. And that work is happening in um, three arenas. We're gonna talk briefly about those, the, legislation, the legislative arena, um, uh, which Ben is gonna go into in more detail, the work of the Climate Council that we've been talking to you about um, in the next Climate Council meeting will happen on Monday, starting at 8.30 a.m. We'll drop a link in the chat to that meeting. Um, it's the first meeting really will there be a real deep focus on sort of governance structure, process, and deep substance learning from other states and how they've done this work. So, um, and then Lauren's gonna talk to us a little bit about you know, what the new federal landscape means in terms of like stimulus dollars in particular. But, so we are deep in this work. Ben, give us a sense of what is happening um, largely in the legislative arena, but from your important perspective. Absolutely, thanks so much, Joey. It's always a pleasure to be on these calls. Uh, so I actually wanted to start a, a little bit outside of the, the building, although of course all of this work is actually happening outside the building right now, but in the, the lingo of us uh, climate advocates um, outside of the legislature, uh, as I'm sure folks listening to this know, uh, we help uh, facilitate and lead a coalition of uh, 31 organizations uh, across you know, faith, uh, low-income advocates, uh, youth voices, uh, a number of other perspectives uh, advocating for climate solutions that also you know, really improve Vermonters' lives here in Vermont. Um, and that coalition uh, has been uh, you know, following these issues very closely. Uh, and you should expect to see in the coming weeks, uh, you know, more from us as a, a coalition uh, in terms of, you know, our uh, perspective and our uh, agenda for uh, both this year and uh, this legislative biennium. And that's where I wanted to start in talking about the legislature um, is emphasizing that right now we're in a, a new moment in Vermont on climate where we have a climate council uh, for the first time. Uh, acting uh, to plan uh, how to achieve our climate targets, not goals, not aspirational goals, but uh, legally binding targets uh, for climate pollution reductions. And that council is doing uh, some good work, uh, though that, that work really is just getting started. And so they have a requirement to come out with a plan uh, December 1st of this year and so a lot of the work that we're doing on climate right now is actually focused on the Climate Council. Um, so you'll be hearing a lot more from us in the coming uh, weeks and months as to what that uh, looks like and how you as members of the public can weigh in uh, with the council, with the subcommittees they'll be creating to really dig into the issues. Um, but just know uh, that while we'll be talking about a whole lot of uh, things 
for this legislative session. Uh, there's a lot more uh, that is being worked on at the council, and we anticipate, uh, you know, uh, even more ambitious climate agenda for the next legislative session. Uh, so as far as this legislative session goes, there are a few things that I wanted to highlight. So number one, uh, happening really right now uh, in what's called the, the Budget Adjustment Act, uh, the Agency of Natural Resources and the, the Scott administration has come in and asked for an additional million dollars uh, for the Climate Council to do its work, do it well, and do it on time. And uh, BPERG and, and BNRC and BCV and a number of other organizations uh, just submitted a, a letter to several legislative committees supporting that ask. And we feel like that's really important uh, because uh, they, you know, frankly do have a lot of work to do on a short time frame. It's very doable work. There are a lot of things they're building on. Here in Vermont, this is not like the first time that people have talked about or thought about climate action here in Vermont, but they have a lot of work to do. Uh, they need to be centering equity. They need to have a robust public process and they feel like they need more resources to do that and do it well. And so uh, we're fully supportive of that ask and uh, hope that the legislature will uh, support it as well. And, and it's looking good uh, so far on that front. Uh, number two, and you heard more about this last week, so I'll be very brief, the Transportation Modernization Act that uh, has now been introduced in the legislature. Actually, in just a few minutes, House Transportation is going to be digging into that, uh, getting a bill walk through, uh, and it has 70 co-sponsors in the House. So that's a fantastic start for that bill that's really intended to cut Vermonters' costs uh, while making transportation more affordable uh, and accessible and frankly, cleaner and more sustainable while and cutting carbon pollution at the same time. A few other quick things to note. Uh, one, uh, the over in Senate Natural Resources, they're digging into a few really important issues. They uh, heard a report from the Public Utilities Commission this morning on how uh, we as a state can really modernize our efficiency and electrification efforts and how we can uh, double down on uh, the, the funding that we're digging into uh, so the funding that uh, we have available there. Uh, and uh, next week uh, in Senate Natural, they'll be getting into uh, the, the idea of weatherization at scale and really ramping up our efforts as a state to make Vermonters homes more efficient and save Vermonters money while putting people to work as we recover from COVID. Uh, so the last thing that I'll note, and then I'll turn it over to Lauren, is that in addition to the Vermont uh, legislature, we're also following what's going on at the federal level very closely. As Joy mentioned, there are a whole, a whole lot of good things that have happened just in the last couple of days uh, in terms of executive orders from the Biden administration. We're also uh, following uh, the president's, nice to say president instead of president-elect, uh, President Biden's American Rescue Plan, his $1.9 trillion uh, COVID recovery uh, and stimulus proposal, uh, and I'll turn it over to Lauren to uh, talk a little bit more about the implications or potential implications of that. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Yeah, we're really watching very closely and weighing in with our federal delegation and trying to think really hard about how can Vermont be positioning itself um, as well as possible to be ready to take advantage of whatever funding opportunities come up from federal, whether it's um, upcoming stimulus, um, there's talk of a potential stimulus this spring that's really focused on infrastructure and climate in particular. So that's really exciting. Um, but then there's also funding opportunities tied to uh, the shorter term stimulus, whether that's things like workforce development um, and programs like that. So I think there is a whole range of opportunities and we're looking closely at what kinds of programs and investments um, Vermont, again, could be ready to jump on and put into action that will help you know, create good paying jobs, save Vermonters money and address and, and tackle the urgent climate crisis at the same time. Um, so that's the frame we're bringing to it and looking at how um, investments and programs so we can advocate for the best possible investments with our federal delegation and also um, with our state legislative um, allies and partners to be ready to um, make those investments strategically and thoughtfully. Uh, so it's a really exciting opportunity and it's going to be a big focus and we'll keep you keep you updated as those are all rolling out as well. Um, you know, as we also keep our eye on longer term investment opportunities like the transportation climate initiative and, and other things because we know this, uh, this won't last forever, <laughs> whatever might come in the in the next year. 
Um, so we'll be doing that work. So we always like to end these with a call to action. So this week, um, again, we'll put in the link to the Climate Council meeting. It's great for those able to um, pop into those. They're online, even, if, even just for the public comment period to you know, be encouraging the council to stay on track, stay focused on the goals and um, you know, really put in place a good process so that we get to a great climate action plan in December. Um, and then we also would love people to check out, we'll put the link to the Transportation Modernization Act. It was really exciting to get 70 co-sponsors and check, see if one of your legislators is a co-sponsor, send them a quick message thanking them. Again, this bill can help give more affordable, healthier, um, and more convenient options for people to be getting around as we can also uh, reduce our reliance on polluting vehicles. So uh, a lot of win-win wins there. So let's thank people for supporting that, uh, that Modernization Act. Um, and thanks for all you do. Let's enjoy this moment, rewatch Amanda Gorman and enjoy the inspiration and hope you all stay warm this chilly upcoming weekend. Take care everyone, we'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you.